please don't hurl any abuse at anyone who is the subject of this video. So I actually want to start today's video with a tweet, which I posted a few days ago. Why is Waterfox Project, a browser boasting about its lack of telemetry and data collection, now owned by System1, a marketing tracking company? Sounds like a fox taking care of the hens. To which they reply back to me. Please read this post and we will have a look at all this uh, information here, but yeah, I want to start with this. I replied back and said, I see your point, but history shows us the abuse which has been carried out when a marketing company have details of every single website users interact with, for example, Ghost Tree Ovidian, Grammarly, and Avast. So as things stand currently when you browse the internet with just a basic web browser, there will be tracking on some web pages with about two thirds of it being uh, owned by Google. But yeah, the other third, well, there's lots of different companies. So no one company can see everything you do and there may or may not be tracking on every website. So yes, no one gets a complete picture of everything you do on the internet. That is unless you have something which can see everything you do on the internet, like a browser add-on or the browser itself. And that is where a marketing company can get a lot of information about you. And yes, you can be the subject of data collection and what you do is worth quite a bit of money. Waterfox advertises itself as an indie web browser with no telemetry and limited data collection, with various other bits which I'm not too interested in for this video. And System 1, what do we do? We are one of the largest publishers of social quizzes and trivia in the world. We also work with the world's largest digital publishers to drive additional audiences to their properties. We drive additional search traffic to the three largest search players, Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Bing, Bing, who are Bing? Oh yeah, Microsoft. We also power search for our sizable network of partners. We leverage our user acquisition capabilities with consumer applications and services. We offer a full suite of privacy and security products, including private search, privacy browsers, and software offering antivirus ad blocking and VPN services. I can't work out what all those are, but the search engine is start page. So anyway, it's not obvious sometimes what these companies have. So System 1 welcomes Waterfox. We're excited to announce that we've acquired the web browser Waterfox, which is known for its customizability and being privacy friendly. System 1 approached Alex to acquire Waterfox, and our promise to him was that we could provide much needed resource to build, sorry, to further build upon the market Waterfox to a broader audience while maintaining the aspects Waterfox is known for. We will honour the promise to him that Waterfox community, as we have done with our investment in the start page. Alex will continue to drive product strategy, only he now has resources to hire a team, build an even better product. We acknowledge the concerns that the privacy community has regarding our ownership, and that there could be scepticism with our commitment to these products. Yes, okay, that is exactly what I'm talking about. And here's the blog post on Waterfox's website about them joining System 1. So it talks a lot about the beginning of Waterfox, that's very nice. But I'm going to move on a bit further down the post here to ethics and privacy. I've touted Waterfox as an ethical and privacy friendly browser. Two things I strongly believe in. People should be free to do what they like with their browser. Ethics being more of a moral stance. Privacy focus and simple changes such as removing telemetry and data collection and try and reduce phone home without disrupting important cogs in the browser. I've never wanted or tried to have Waterfox appear as a privacy tool or anything more than what it is. That's for other tools such as Tor. I can respect what the community fights for, but I don't think I can respect how they sometimes fight for it or how they act when they believe they are wronged. And there's some talk about harassment here. So yes, that's uh, why I mentioned what I did at the beginning of the video. People don't seem to understand what System 1 does and assume the worst, I suppose understandable. You correct me from what I've read on their website. It's a company that is pivoting to more privacy oriented products due to a changing landscape. It's also important to note, as much as I'm sure System 1 liked what Waterfox does, they were buying into me and my knowledge more than they were investing in Waterfox. From the partnership we have, from that partnership and having get to know the team, I saw the System 1 were the right people to help me grow Waterfox. Down to earth people who knew what they were doing, I made sure I did my vetting, and boy, 
did we do vetting and found a perfect fit. In December, we finalized everything and Waterfox became a part of System 1. So yeah, the announcement is only just recently that it's all happened. Closing notes, unfortunately a lot of people have been making up scenarios of what's going to happen to Waterfox, and essentially everything they've been mentioning is what I know illegal under UK and EU law, the jurisdiction Waterfox is under. I'm not here to change their minds, their extrapolation of what Waterfox was is up to them, but now they can finally focus on making Waterfox into a viable alternative to the big browsers. A bit of competition would be good, because right now the two major browsers are Google and Firefox. But anyway, I've mentioned what I wanted to from those articles. Let's go on to Start Page. So Start Page, Privacy One Group is a separate operating unit of System One, focusing entirely on user privacy. Great, so it all sounds good so far. Let's take a look at Start Page. Now I've changed the view here to get a recording of the full desktop, but what we have here is uBlock Origin with a couple of items blocked. Now I'll run uBlock Origin a bit different to how most people would run it, in that I only focus on the privacy element. I don't really do anything about blocking the advertising. So why have we got a couple of items blocked and what are they? So if I open up the filter, we can take a look. So yeah, just got to refresh that. And yeah, we have uh, these items blocked here that uh, seem to have some uh, parameters on here. So what are these parameters? Well, that's probably the time. TZ0, time zone. Well, I'm in GMT. The numbers 19, 20, and 1080. Well, that's my screen resolution. Uh, we've got browser width, browser height, perhaps language English. Why, why do you need to know all these details? Why are you recording them? Why is all that stuff being recorded? What purpose does it serve? Why can't I just look at a page? like DuckDuckGo, and not have anything blocked. Although we have this improving item here, but that's another story entirely. Uh, well, actually you can look at it. Improving DuckDuckGo, um, funny enough, I can't see any parameters about screen size in there. It's more just what I'm currently looking at and what I'm clicking on the page, which as long as that doesn't have a unique ID in there, then that's just saying a user has clicked this area of the page and will help in development of it. It's a little bit different to all the details about my hardware. So there's no way we'll know exactly what the future of Waterfox will be. However, there's a point I want to mention here, that those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat the same mistakes. And what has history taught us about marketing companies in particular? There's an article here from 2014 about Ividian rebrands Ghostry and focuses on enterprise tools. So Ghostry is one of these tools I hear a lot of people saying about how many trackers is being blocked on the page. And yes, it sounds very good, but has anyone ever stopped to think how they're getting this data and where they're getting the monetization for this project from? Or well, it used to be Avidian. It's changed now. But Avidian, let's see. So was the now? Avidian Labs Analytics. Avidian Labs, Competitive Intelligence Data, Avidian Inform, all renamed to Ghostry Enterprise. Sorry to say, if you're using Ghostry, you're just giving all your data away to Avidian. And even if we take a look at the privacy policy now of Ghostry, since it's owned by a different company, offers known as Ghostry Rewards is turned on by default and allows companies to show relevant marketing offers to users based upon an algorithm we created that anonymously determines the intent and therefore particular commercial offers that may be of interest to you doesn't rely on personal data, but you can opt out any time. Oh yeah, there's the company that acquired them, Clicks. And they say about data collection, we automatically collect non-private URLs, search queries, along with search engine results, suspicious URLs that could potentially be phishing sites, information related to be safe and unsafe trackers, and information related to prevalence and performance of trackers. <laughs> Looks like they're doing the same thing to me. Oh, Ghostry aren't the only example. We had a vast. Antivirus firm Avast is reportedly selling users web browsing data. Same thing with AVG, although they're the same company, but yeah. A few years back, AVG can sell your browsing and search history to advertisers. Browser extensions that collect and sell your data with almost no oversight. And this mentions about an add-on called HoverZoom. And we also have Mozilla Band's 23 snooping Firefox extensions. So yeah. So I think that gives you a little bit of history there about some abuse which has taken place with web browser extensions. And now we have a whole web browser owned by a marketing company. I just can't see this being a good situation. 
Maybe they'll prove me entirely wrong, but that is my opinion, which I've put forward. Now I've left links to all the sources which I've used for this video, so I encourage you to take a look and you can draw upon your own decisions. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.